It's been a pretty tough year for culinary king Jamie Oliver. In May, his global restaurant empire, of course, collapsed and that took with it his beloved Diner 15 and the once wildly successful Jamie's Italian chain. But he hasn't let all of that get him down. He's released a new book and a TV series to match and it's focusing solely on the humble vegetable. Now, I caught up with him to hear all about his new campaign and how he's keeping his dynasty alive. In the bustling burbs of India, street food is everything. In flavour, it's synonymous with vegetables. Hot chilies sizzle away in spicy potato for a perfect snack. And naan breads are stuffed to the brim with green goodness. Mushrooms, broccoli, then cauliflower, then uh, radish. It's like vegetable heaven. It's just taken a massive amount of vegetables, made into a little pouch. It's enough to make even the most devoted meat eater a little bit envious. And that's the whole point behind Jamie Oliver's new cookbook, simply titled Veg. We just wanted to put veg front and centre and have a laugh with it, show that you can have a really delicious meal and it can be a celebration, not a commiseration. And as a sort of meat eater myself, who loves fish as well, you know, I wasn't, I wasn't going to compromise on flavour, no way. The Naked Chef spent eight years writing and developing the recipes, waiting for that perfect moment when he knew people would finally accept meat-free meals with open arms. A lot of people grew up with the sort of meat and three veg approach, that was all they knew. Do you think that's part of the problem? You know, whether it's meat and two veg, meat and three veg, uh, getting into a habit, buying the same thing, definitely we're all guilty of. And I think, you know, in this day and age, sort of thinking about, you know, cost, thinking about health, thinking about impact on environment, um, there's so many reasons why being fussy about meat is really, really important. In true Jamie style, the veggie campaign is also about getting your hands a little bit dirty. I've enjoyed growing stuff for many, many years. Um, I love kind of um, being a bit of a geek and swapping seeds with other geeks and growing the most unusual potatoes, tomatoes, chilies, zucca, you know, pumpkins, you know, things you can't... <laughs> we grow things that you can't even dream of. And of course, also wanting to ensure the younger generations are involved in every step. You know, in all the work that I've done in schools around the world for the last 15 years, you know, I've never met, met a, ki a kid that won't eat something that they've grown. From getting men into the kitchen to making school lunches healthier, Jamie's been a driving force from the moment he burst onto the scene 20 years ago. Of course, you're a man of many passions, and certainly one in recent times is that fight against sugar that you've taken up. It's been interesting to see the UK has actually now introduced a sugar tax, which has been discussed for Australia as well. What's the response to it been like over there? First of all, there has been a lowering in consumption. Um, two out of every three sugary drinks products have reformulated, and that was the point. I think symbolically, uh, the tax means that, you know, if certain parts of the food industry start getting too successful at the detriment to our population, to our kids, to our children and to our future, uh, then tax uh, is, is one of the things that they can do. But more than anything, mate, you know, we've got 400 million pounds of new money ring fenced and going into education. But it hasn't all been smooth sailing. Earlier this year, his restaurant group went into administration, leaving more than a 1,000 people without jobs. Now, look, it's certainly been a couple of difficult years here for you in terms of the collapse of some of your restaurants. Uh, have you had any time now to reflect on that? And is there anything in particular that you've learnt? Of course, there's ups and there's downs. Um, and generally speaking, I'm a very glass half full, optimistic person. So, look, I'm good. I'm really good. You know, um, I've, I've gone through uh, the, the sort of tough times of this year and I'm, I'm back on my feet. I'm very happy. Um, and look, veg for me as well with the TV series and the book going out. You know, the book went in at number one. People seem to be digging it. So, you know, fingers crossed, uh, you know, we crack on and uh, onwards and upwards, bro. Yeah, it was very positive spin there from Jamie and a positive message. Interesting to see though that since we recorded that interview it's now actually come out that Jamie paid himself 5.2 million dollars last year and that was just months before the Empire sort of collapsed so that's obviously going to be a, a pretty hard pill for 
a lot of his former workers uh, to, to swallow. But look, in contrast and, and in fairness, the, mm. the previous year his salary was almost double that. So he has copped a massive pay cut as well. The, the group did try and sort of save the empire by injecting tens of millions of dollars into the restaurants worldwide. It mm. clearly didn't work. So look, it's a sorry state of affairs for yeah. everyone involved. And, and clearly he is now trying to turn it around. Mm. I just wonder how much... It, that perception of, of some workers getting dudded might stay in people's minds or mm. whether they say, yeah, no, you know what, I've liked this guy for decades, so let's give him another chance. 5.2 million is a big whack though, isn't it? It is, but that aside, I, I think his messaging is so good and he is mm. so passionate about turning things around in, you know, schools mm. um, across the UK. I mean, he's spread that message worldwide, really, hasn't he, about mm. giving mm. kids nutritious proper food. Uh, there's a lot of really positive stuff that comes from him. I think yeah. his cookbooks are fantastic. Mm. Um, uh, personally, I'm, I'm a fan. Um, in terms of, is he a good business operator? That's maybe another question. Yeah, I mean, he's not quite George Columbaris uh, le no. level in terms mm. of that. But, I mean, he, as you said, there is a positive message there. And I, and I think people are learning across the world to eat healthier. And he's one of the main influences behind us starting Definitely. to actually take a bit more notice. And, it, uh, you know, with the obesity ep epidemic only getting worse, that we do need to start listening to those messages a lot more as well. Absolutely. Well said. Mm.